Uh, today I want to speak about what is the spirit of the Antichrist. Have you heard about the spirit of the Antichrist who will be present in the last days? Have you heard about him? Now the phrase spirit of the Antichrist is found in the book of uh, 1 John 4 verses 2 to 3. Uh, first John from verse 1. Uh, let, let me just start from verse 1, okay? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses that Jesus uh, is come... Uh, that not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now it is in the world. Anyone who says that uh, Jesus is not come in the flesh, then uh, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Have you seen some spirits, some people who try to say other things? They say... the. Uh, you see some weird doctrines and people trying to mix up things. It's as if they want to say, it's Jesus is not God. You see, it's not the way you think. He never really came here. It was just like uh, some, some a lot of things. I, I, I don't know how to explain, but as I continue, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. So now those are what we call the spirit of the Antichrist. It is vital to understand the context of John's statement. Okay. You have to understand what John was meaning here. Okay. A predominant worldview when the when uh, Paul, I, I mean not Paul, I'm always used to Paul. When John was writing this letter, he suggested that diverse spirits were at work in the world. And there are very, 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 very many false teachings, like I was just telling you, very many false teachings mystery religions, spiritual experiences, the variations of Christianity, which emerge each and every time. Have you ever heard uh, some, uh, this mysticism and uh, the new age and uh, I don't know, many people are coming up with so many religions and things which are just confusing. Have you ever heard people saying that, you see, Jesus was created by God, uh, Jesus is inferior to the Father, and uh, there's, there's nothing like the Trinity, uh, Jesus is this and that. You, have you heard all those kind of people speaking some weird perversions? Now, the spiritual atmosphere was not unlike the one present in our world today, back in the days. People entertained countless views regarding the truth. They all wanted the truth. But then when we see this, John presented a definite, uh, a definite uh, 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 solution for wading through this variety of beliefs and teachings. He instructed his readers to pay attention and test the spirits, okay? Test the spirits, where is it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, First John 4 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, yes, test these spirits if they be of God. This one is very important, you have to understand. And you may be asking, so how, how, Keith, how, how do we test these spirits? How, how do we test? Because, okay, you're telling us to test these spirits. How can we test these spirits and discern which teachers are imparting the truth? And how do we recognize the spirit of the Antichrist? How can we recognize this? You know, those spirits of the Antichrist, they don't have a slogan or they don't have a, a mark on their face and saying, Oh, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. No, we, they don't have that. The spirits which John spoke of and are, are not me merely disembodied supernatural beings. You know, that's what people think, that the, the demons know. He's not talking about that. John is teaching that a prophet or teacher who has a natural, uh, 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 whose mouth, mouth always speaks against the things of God, there's a possibility he has a spirit of Antichrist. Now, spiritual doctrines are promulgated through human spokespersons. Teachers of truth are filled with the Spirit of God, okay? And uh, therefore, they are agents who speak for God. 
but teachers of falsehood are spreading the doctrines of devils. Have you heard people speaking things which are just uh, what we call the doctrines of devils? Have you heard people like this? And they say some things and you wonder, huh, is that person even a believer? Is that person a believer? Have you looked at people like that and you and you ask, oh, I, I, if that is the God that these people are teaching, huh, I don't want to be involved. Have you, have you heard people like that? And they tend to paint the word of God in another way. See what the Bible says. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. When uh, it's capital S, it means it's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit of God speaketh expressly that in the latter time shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. You see, small, small S meaning is demonic spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And of course, they'll be doing a lot of things. Look, one of them, forbidding to marry. Do you see this with Catholics? Do you see this with so many false uh, 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 churches out there? Commanding to abstain from meats. Have you seen this with the uh, Seventh-day Adventists? They say, oh, don't eat this, don't eat that. All those kind of things. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if received with thanksgiving. But these people, they come with some doctrines of devils and they try to say, Oh, don't do this. This one is holy. That one is not holy. It's like they're coming with their own traditions. Beware of those people. Okay? Beware of such kind of people. Now, the first test which we have to test to understand this kind of uh, spirits of the Antichrist, or so these people who are being led by the Antichrist, we have to test uh, according to theology or according to the doctrine, okay? We have to understand, because the Bible tells us, like I've read to you in 1 John 4, 2, that every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, okay? Anyone who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And we can ask, does the content of the person teaching acknowledge that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully human? If they say something different, then it means those people, they are liars and they are hypocrites and they are teaching a different doctrine. If they start saying, oh, Jesus did not come in the flesh, Jesus was a, you know, he was just a force. Like most of the people who say, it's just some force, it's just some things like that, then they are not of God, okay? And, uh, we, we have to understand, if, if people don't believe and they don't teach, or if your pastor doesn't teach this kind of doctrine, then uh, there's a possibility he has a spirit of the Antichrist, okay? You should reject that. Now, this particular test was especially a propos... Uh, a, 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 um, why am I saying a propos appropriate <laughs> this particular teaching was so appropriate in the time of John as the heresy of a uh, you remember these guys used to be called the Gnostics okay the Gnostics they they were kind of people who who are becoming very prevar, uh, prevalent in uh, those days and they used to say that uh, Jesus only appeared to have a human body but was actually uh, not a flesh and blood person. The Gnostic Gospels, if you have heard about them. So these are some of the teachings and the Gospels of devils that we are talking about. Okay? And uh, we see also, the next day John saying, every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. And he has told us about that. He explains to us each and every time. Okay? And anyone who does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Bible presents him is inspired by the spirit of the Antichrist. You have to believe the way Jesus is. If he says he came from heaven, yeah, we believe that. He, he did this and this, yeah. Everything which is taught in the Bible. So anyone who says something different, then uh, he's got another spirit, okay? Now, we have to ask ourselves, the word Antichrist... Okay, Antichrist, what does it mean? The word Antichrist. Antichrist basically means someone opposing Christ or against 
uh, Christ or uh, his people and things like that. So is the enemy the opposite of Christ? So anyone who is anti, anti this, anti that, anti that, it means he's against, he's against, okay? So when we hear that, we may tend to look deeper into this because uh, people who say that Jesus is not from God, they are controlled by that kind of spirit. There is a spirit of the great opposer of Christ who will be coming soon with power and all wonders and who will be called the man of sin, the, the man of lawlessness, who will have the power given by Satan himself. So if you see people behaving in a way that they are opposing the things of God, they have the spirit of this guy. Okay? Are, are you seeing the point? So the spirit of the Antichrist teaches against Christ himself. They don't want to hear the story about Christ. They teach against him. And to twist the, they love to twist the truth about Jesus and to pervert the gospel. And you have to understand that uh, Satan works in spreading lies about Christ and keeping people in the dark. Okay? Satan loves keeping people in the dark so much. Because the Bible has already told us about this. And you can go and read so much on uh, 2 John 1.7. But now, let me come to something here. You have to understand that the spirit of the Antichrist, it is the, it, it's the same one as, you remember the birds in the, in the parable of the sower? Okay? That, that when uh, something is planted, he, the birds come and uh, pick those uh, seeds which have been planted. And they run away with them. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. When someone comes and plants the truth of the gospel, someone else comes and then he, he, he runs away with that gospel. He gives you another a, a lie and then he takes away the truth. That, that's like those birds in the parable of the sower. If you have read that parable in Mark 4.4 4, uh, all the way and you can read even verse 15. So it is the God of this age who blinds the mind of the unbelievers, keeping them from seeing the light of the gospel, which is displayed in the glory of Christ. You have to understand that. The Bible tells us about uh, this in 2 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4. Okay? It tells us that spirit, in whom the God of this world, see, the God with a small g, the God of this world, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of, uh, gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? So, this God of this world has blinded people, and people are so blind, they don't see the truth of the gospel. They don't see. Because they are following the father of lies. Who is the father of lies? Satan. Okay? Father of lies. Let me show you who this father of lies is. And if you're following this person, then you're deceived. See, John 8, 44. You have your father the devil. This is Jesus. He was speaking. He's saying, oh, you have your father the devil. And the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and a bored not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a, a liar and the father of it, the father of lies. So if you are following this Satan, then uh, my friends, you are following the father of lies. The spirit of the Antichrist will be in you. He is in this dragon. You know the Bible talks about the dragon who will lead the world astray. That is the father of lies, the, the one who will lead everyone astray. So if you see somebody trying to follow these kind of things, then you can know who his father is. Okay, let me show you that dragon, the red dra dragon. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, you remember that serpent in the Garden of Eden called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. My friends, this is the deceiver. And when you see somebody is walking in the ways of, of lies and uh, things like that, they have the spirit of this deceiver. Now, the Bible teaches that the world will eventually produce a world ruler called the beast. 
eventually a beast will come this is the antichrist the one who will be against christ the beast okay he will be a man and this one is only an illusion uh, i mean an explanation uh, let me not call it illusion an explanation of who that guy will be he'll be you know leading a couple of nations and things like that so the antichrist will come at some point okay who will wield great power and demand worship of himself he will have a mouth uttering proud words and blasphemies and things like that he'll be speaking a lot of blasphemies the bible tells us that and he'll be empowered by satan okay let me show you this guy will be empowered by satan speaking a lot of lies and things like that see what the bible says and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and a feet was the feet of a bear and his mouth is the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and i saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast and they worshipped the dragon you see because of those lies and believing this antichrist this beast they will all worship satan which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him are you seeing the point here are you seeing this dragon lying to everyone and even the beast coming and empowering everyone to worship satan are you seeing that point and also in 2 Thessalonians 2 chapter 3 the final antichrist will be the culmination of the evil working of satan through the centuries okay throughout the centuries and the antichrist of the end times will embody all the deception and perversion of truth that the spirit of antichrist has always promoted and you have to understand that today the secret power of lawlessness is already here that spirit is already here it's already here you don't need to be told just look around it's already here that spirit of the antichrist you will go to some churches and you ask yourself what are these people preaching are they preaching prosperity or are they preaching the word of god for the mystery of iniquity does already work it's already at work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way hmm who will take him out of the way? Who will be taken out of the way? In short, the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit lives with the believers, then now the Antichrist will take full force. Okay? He will take full force. Because he's already here and he's already operating. That same spirit will empower the Antichrist. The spirit of Satan will empower the Antichrist. Okay? Of the last days. Who is already operating behind the scenes in the world to bring confusion and deception to the issue of Jesus Christ's person and work. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming. And John even told us that this one is the spirit of the Antichrist. John 4 verse 3. That spirit is already working. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist wherefore you have heard that should come and even now is already in the world it's already there confusing people with new doctrines and new things and uh, you see this and this will happen and and have you have you looked at people nowadays and you and you ask what is wrong with people they are believing some lies they they, they behave as if uh, they, they are righteous but they are so dark they behave as if they are white out here and uh, when people when they are speaking cool words and say oh you know god loves you and they don't tell you which kind of god is that they are talking about they are dark they are liars they are hypocrites okay you have to understand this this is that spirit of the antichrist which of heard is coming and now is already at work okay you have to understand that. Even given the uh, uh, pervasive influence of the spirit of the Antichrist, there is no need to fear. As John reminds us all the time that the spirit of truth indwells all believers and provides protection from the spirit of Antichrist. He told us, John told us, that when you have the spirit of God in you, yeah, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Don't worry. Don't worry. John 
First John 4.4, 4, the one that is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So you don't need to worry. All you need to do is follow the Spirit of God. Walk in the Spirit so that you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And the flesh is all after the working of Satan. The flesh wants to sin. The flesh wants to do this. The flesh wants this and this. So walk in the Spirit of God who is in you. And uh, we have some practical ways uh, to distinguish the false spirit of the Antichrist from the true spirit of God. We have some practical ways. Now, you have to understand that uh, the Bible tells us that uh, false prophets are from the world and therefore they speak from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them because they are of the world. But we ourselves, we are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not of God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Remember what I told you in 1 John 4, 5 to 6, go and read there. You will see, you will recognize by how they speak of God. Now, those who are influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist, okay, those who are influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist, are the people of the world. They have the same values as the world. Therefore, the world listens to them. Okay? Those who acknowledge Christ have a spirit of truth, and they embrace the apostles' message. Okay? And the, the, the gospel of the apostles, which was preached, is never popular in the world. We know that. But it is that very gospel that holds the power to save through God's spirit of truth. That gospel is the one which saves. Okay, Romans 1 verse 16. It's that gospel which has the power to save. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And as we finish this, I'll tell you what that gospel is. Okay? It's really, really important to understand this. Okay? Really, really important to understand this. Now, the believer's job, the believer's job is to understand that we are not of this world. Okay? Yes, we're in this world, but we are not of this world. We are passerbys. And your job is to test every spirit Carefully, like I've told you in 1 John 4, 1, test every spirit. We must be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Remember Jesus told us in Matthew 10, 16, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. We should not automatically embrace the message of any preacher or any teacher or simply because of his uh, reputation, credentials, but rather we must listen cautiously to their Christolo uh, Christology. What do they talk about Christ? How do they, are they like Christ or are they pretending to be like Christ? And also make sure you listen to what they say about Jesus. Because that is what is of utmost importance. When you understand this, you'll be able to test, you'll be able to know this person is a fake or this person is a true. Okay? Test every spirit. Test every spirit. Don't just listen to some theories or listen to some people who are saying, oh, we know this, we know that, hey, you're a fool. Be because remember the Bible says in the day, last days there'll be a lot of mockers and scoffers and telling you, oh, you're a fool because you don't believe in, you don't believe what we believe. Hey, you're a fool because you don't know this and this and this. But when you see the world heading north, my friend, head south. Because the world is heading against God, is going away from God. But it's only through you testing every spirit that you'll be able to know which spirit is of God and which one is not. And you'll be saved. Because the gospel, like I've told you, I'll tell you what the true gospel is. And if you hear someone teaching something else apart from this gospel, then this person is lost. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about Understanding what Jesus did for us and how he did it. What did Jesus do for us? 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died for our sins. For our sins. He didn't die for nothing. He died for our sins. Okay? So, how did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood. 
So why the blood? Uh, probably if Jesus could have died of drowning in water or electrocution or just, uh, you know, any other thing, strangled. Could there be salvation? No. Why? Because the Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. There have to be shedding of blood. The book of Hebrews tells us. Now, why blood? Why blood? You may ask, why blood, Keith? Why are you talking about the blood? Because the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the souls. So it is only the blood which can atone for the soul. It's not anything else. So this had to happen. And it's not just any other blood. It's innocent blood. You can't, you can't, uh, you, you can't uh, uh, atone for... Uh, you, you, you can say, I, I am evil and I'm cleaning also another evil man. There has to be an innocent person taking the position of an, of an evil person. That's why Jesus had to come to the picture. Because you are evil, you can't atone for your own soul when you're evil. Are you seeing the point? That's why Jesus, 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood for us. So that whosoever we believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Do you believe in Jesus? When you understand this fact and you believe in him, then my friend, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. All you need to do is just tell Christ what you believed. Tell him, Jesus, now I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. And after you, you do that, my friends, you're saved and you're ready for the rapture. And don't listen to people who have the spirit of the Antichrist. I've told you how you can test. See, is what they're saying according to the Bible? If it's not and they tell you, oh, Jesus showed me this. Oh, I, I prayed and saw some light and I saw this and this and this happened last night. Don't listen to them. If it's not in the Bible, don't believe it, okay? Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have been able to understand. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can share the video for other people to be able to hear. And as well, you can subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day. And uh, hit the notification button so that you don't miss any new video which we post every day. You'll be the first one to be notified. And likewise... um. At the description of our channel, of our of our channel, and also of this video, there's a, a this, uh, links, some links to other channels that we also post in different other areas like BitChute and so forth. Please go and check and also share to your friends because uh, there's a lot to learn. God bless you and be uh, blessed and have a great time.